the same uniform as Rean's sister. Yeah, they must go to St. Australia too. So, the famous St. Australia Girls School is around here, huh? It's supposed to be a combined middle and high school exclusively for the young ladies of the nobility. Yeah, this is one part of the capital that the masses have no reason to visit. Although, I can at least support the school's commitment to fostering chastity and rejecting materialism. You seem to know an awful lot about a fancy girl's school. D no, no I don't. This is all just common knowledge. Anyway, let's go and wait by the front gate. Yeah, those were the instructor's orders. I'm feeling kind of nervous, actually. Why would you? <laughs> to men, this academy must seem clad in the mysterious, impenetrable aura of feminine nobility. wondering did you not want to come here Laura my father did recommend it to me but they offered no classes in the martial arts that alone was reason enough to look elsewhere <laughs> I can totally understand that though I get the feeling Laura would cause a real uproar if she went to a school for genteel young ladies yeah I can picture the chaos now. Oh? I have a number of acquaintances who attend there, and from all I hear, it does seem to be a wonderful school. I've heard that even Princess Alfin herself is a student there. I've heard that too. Princess who? You've seriously never heard of her? I know you're not from Erebonia, but even still... <laughs> to be fair, I wouldn't be surprised if plenty of Erebonians didn't know who she is. Princess Elfin is the daughter of our reigning emperor, His Majesty Emperor Eugent. She's supposed to be as sweet as an angel, and popular with everyone. Is that so? <laughs> Actually, I believe she's the same age as Fee. I've had the opportunity to meet her once before. She truly is as charming as the rumors suggest. I figured as much. I've seen photographs of her plenty of times in magazines, though I've never had the opportunity to meet her. Sounds like she's in the same school year as Elise, come to think of it. She has a twin brother, too, Prince Cedric. He's the crown prince of Erebonia. Oh, right. I think I've seen a picture of the prince in a magazine before. Dark blonde hair, like Eusis's brother, right? Oh, I think you're thinking of Prince Oliver. He's Cedric and Alfin's older brother. Why isn't he the crown prince then? I've heard the reason is that his mother was a commoner. It seems like a stupid reason to deny him the right of succession, but that's how nobles do things. I feel like I've been hearing his name a lot lately. He made a big splash when he came back from the borough aboard that airship. Uh, you know the one, right? Ah, uh, you must be referring to his return aboard the Arcel after the crisis in the borough was put to rest. Yeah, I remember seeing that. It really made a big impact. I'd never seen an airship that looked so white and elegant before. I believe my father went to welcome the prince back in his capacity as Imperial Governor, too. And yeah, now that you mention it, that does seem to be when I started hearing his name around a lot more. Oh, you're all here already! Ah, you made it! <laughs> it's good to see you all again. You're a bunch of early birds, aren't you? Well, we just about finished up everything we had to do when we got the call to meet here. Were you able to finish up everything on your end, too? <laughs> As if we'd leave any loose ends. If not for our unfamiliarity with the city, we would have been finished this morning. <sighs> Every time. Looks like getting these two to kiss and make up will be an uphill battle. <laughs> well, some say that when someone gets under your skin, it means you really care about what they think. Wait, did you two...? <laughs> I figured the girls would be the first to notice. <laughs> of course. I, um... I apologize for any worry I've caused you. We're fine now. 
Really? That's great! <laughs> it sure is. Maybe after this field study is over, we can get together and spend the night talking in one of our rooms. Sounds good. <laughs> the thought of a Class 7 pajama party makes me a little embarrassed. That's girls for you. <laughs> girls and sleepovers go together like jam and toast, huh? That must be Heimdall Cathedral's bell. It has a solemn, stately sound, wouldn't you say? It sounds so different from how it does in the Aust District. Though that makes sense, considering the distance. That bell ringing must mean it's five o'clock. Which means it's almost the time we were supposed to meet here. Green? Elise, what are you doing here? Wait, I guess this is your school, so where else would you be? Um, yes. all of your classmates are with you, too. <laughs> it's only been a week since we saw you, hasn't it? <laughs> well, we were told to meet here. Wait a minute. Are you the ones? The nine guests I was told to expect at five o'clock sharp? Well, there are nine of us in class seven. Wait, what? Then that would mean... You're the one we were told wanted us to come here? Actually, I suspect that would be a friend of mine. Why does she always have to be such a mischief maker? I swear. She could have at least given me a little warning that you were coming. Um, Elise? Anyway, where are my manners? Welcome to St. Astraya Girls' School. I hope you'll enjoy your visit. Right this way. What's in here? It looks like an indoor garden. This is the Academy's Rose Garden. The person who called you here is waiting inside. Who did call us here anyway? Whoever they are, they must have considerable social standing. Your Highness, I brought the guests. Thank you. Please show them in. Oh. No way. Hey, Elise, is that... You don't need to ask when you already know. Now, if you'll follow me... <gasps> I... I knew... 
knew it. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen of Class 7. My name is Alfin. Alfin Rice Arner. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. Alright? I was only trying to tease you a little. Hmm. Don't you have something you wanted to discuss with everyone? Please, go right ahead. Ah, <sighs> well, that aside. It's been a long time since I last saw both of you, Yusus and Laura. I'm glad to see you're both well. Likewise, Your Highness. <laughs> You've become even more fetching since we last met. I was rather hoping that you'd decide to enroll in St. Estraya, too. But it seems you chose to attend Thor's after all. Well, I've committed myself to following the way of the sword, and Thor's gives me a place to hone my skills. I apologize for not being able to live up to your expectations. Ah, <sighs> first I lost Angelica to Thor's, then you too. Perhaps I should just transfer there next year myself. Your Highness! <laughs> Got you to look! But, but I... Hmm. Well, she seems lively. She seems far more easygoing than I was expecting. I've heard plenty about her, but none of that prepared me for meeting her in person. So... This is what it's like to be in the presence of royalty. It's actually rather overwhelming. I can see why people always compare her to an angel. <laughs> Me too. Please don't worry about me. Well, I still have much to learn before I feel like I deserve my status among the nobility. I've been blessed with wonderful friends, and I'm enjoying life here at the Academy. Well, she does seem to have at least one wonderful friend. Kind of an understatement when that friend happens to be Princess Elfin. <laughs> I'm particularly happy to finally be able to meet you, Reen Schwarzer. Elise has told me so much about you. Y your Highness! Um, I'm honored that you'd say so. Elise always mentions in her letters what a great friend she has. As her brother, I wanted to thank you for that. Uh, Reen? Refreshing. You're every bit the person Elise says you are. Perhaps even more so. Huh? Actually, I have a teensy weensy favor to ask. Do you think I could join Elise in thinking of you as my dear brother as well? Wh what? Y Your Highness! You see, Elise has spoken of you so often that, in my heart, you've already come to feel like family. And now that I've had the opportunity to meet you, I fear I simply can't suppress these feelings any longer. I have two brothers already, of course, so I'm sure it won't take long to adjust. I... I couldn't possibly. I mean... That's enough, Your Highness. Aw, don't be so stingy. Surely it wouldn't hurt to share him with me a little. Anyway, that aside. The reason I called you here today was not to talk with me. There is someone else who would like to meet you. Why? It's not like we're famous. Who do you mean? Isn't that 
a guitar? No, a lute? <laughs> oh, it seems he's arrived! Oh! Huh. Well, I apologize for keeping you waiting. It's a pleasure to see you again. <laughs> and you as well, young lady. Well, I trust everyone here has been making themselves comfortable. Who's this guy? I'm not sure, though I feel like I've seen him somewhere before. I serve as a music instructor in the hallowed halls of this fine academic institution. In truth, I am ever on the hunt for that elusive mayfly we call love. But that might raise eyebrows at a girl's school. But whose pulse would not quicken wandering into this untainted cloister of dew-eyed maidens? Ah, oh, the romance. Uh. Could he be? <clears throat> Ow! I think that's quite enough. Any more of that and our guests may start edging toward the exit. Ah, oh, I can always count on you to never miss a beat, my dear sister. Wait, so this is... Wow! Indeed. Tis I, Olivert Rice Arner, also known by some unscrupulous individuals as the debaucherous prince. I also serve as Thor's Military Academy's ornamental chairman of the board. It's a pleasure to finally meet you, ladies and gentlemen of Class 7. to admit, I was surprised to learn that you're the chairman of the board of directors, your highness. I'd heard that the chairman was a member of the imperial family, but still. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Who would expect the infamous prodigal son to chair a committee at a prestigious academy like Thor's? I suppose it's not surprising they'd rather keep it hushed up, though. It wouldn't exactly be great for the school's image. Hmm. That's surprisingly forthright coming from you. Is it really true, though? I mean, that you were the one responsible for establishing Class 7, Your Highness? Indeed, I was. You see, it's always been a tradition that a member of the Imperial family serves as chairman of the board. At first, I wore the title and name only, but I had a change of heart after my vacation in Liberal two years ago. You were in Liberal back then? That would put your visit during the incident that occurred there, correct? Right. All I've done since I returned to Erebonia has been inspired by my experience during the crisis in Liberal. As a result, fruitless though they may prove to be, I've set a number of plans in motion. One of which is to bring the winds of change to Thor's military academy. A gust of fresh air, if you will. Winds of change, huh? I can only assume you're referring to our class? Then the one who decided to throw both commoners and nobles into the same class was... Yes, the idea was mine. Although the selected students also had to have a high aptitude with the Arcus units too. I think I'm finally starting to understand the reasoning behind Class 7. And why we're being sent all over Erebonia on these field studies. To show us firsthand and give us cause to consider the conflict between the two factions. That is the purpose behind our field studies. Is it not, Your Highness? That is one of the reasons, yes. However, my foremost intention was to show you that during your lives, you will encounter many obstacles and conflicts. Not just between factions, but between the capital and the provinces, tradition and technology, even between nations. In these turbulent times, I thought that this would provide the hands-on education today's promising youths need. 
We need up-and-comers who can think and act independently to face tomorrow's challenges head-on. That makes sense. Wow, that's quite a plan. I can't help but feel a little unsure whether we can live up to such high expectations. Hearing your explanation has, at the very least, cleared up many of the doubts I've had up to this point. Class 7 does seem like an ideal environment to expand one's outlook on life. I feel like going through everything we have so far has brought us closer to doing exactly that. Yep. Marvelous. I'm so pleased to hear it. Just listening to you makes me feel even more certain that establishing Class 7 was the right decision. Especially since while the idea itself was mine, I have no real say in how the classes run day to day. Even so, I still hope to meet all of you at least once, if only to tell you all this. That was when Alfin stepped in and offered to set up this little meeting. I see. <laughs> well, I could hardly refuse such a sincere request from my brother. But it also presented me a fine chance to finally meet Elise's beloved brother, as I've always wanted to. I your Highness! <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to tell us all of this, Your Highness. I feel like now that I know, I want to live up to the promise you saw in Class 7. Thing is, am I right in assuming that Class 7 doesn't exist just to fulfill your progressive ideal? What are you... Oh? The board has its chairman, of course, but three directors besides. My older brother Rufus, Imperial Governor Karl Regnitz, and Irina Reinford of the Reinford Group. Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it... They do seem to have certain expectations for us. <laughs> Precisely. As I mentioned, I no longer have anything to do with how Class 7 is run. That authority lies with the directors. As you're keenly aware, Rufus and Governor Regnitz sit on opposite sides of the factional divide. And while Chairman Arena is mostly involved with Class 7's technology, like the Arcus, her intentions are a mystery to me. And it's those three who decide where you'll travel for your field studies. Is that right? When you put it that way, it does make it seem like some kind of bargaining is taking place behind the scenes. It was one of the conditions they gave in exchange for allowing Class 7 to be established. I'll admit, I hesitated to allow it, but I decided to place my hopes in you. We believed then, as we still do, that one day, you all will be a great light that can push back the darkness of this country. <laughs> well, I suppose when I put it that way, it sounds positively heroic. But that's just me. Don't feel too pressured by it. Your students, first and foremost. Reach out and grab that fragrant rose of school life. Join a club. Eat cheap food with your friends at midnight. Fall in love. We live but once. Make your youth count. <laughs> you know, it's weird, but hearing you say that kind of takes a load off my mind. By the way, just earlier you said that we believed the Class 7 would be a great light. Is there someone else involved with Thors who shares your vision for our class, Your Highness? There is. Principal Van Dyke. I once attended Thors myself and studied under him. He gave my proposal to establish Class 7 his full backing. I see. He's been particularly considerate toward us ever since we arrived at the Academy. While he has no direct control over the running of the Academy, he does preside over the board meetings. And above all, he's the one who assembled an excellent team to give you first-rate training. An excellent team, you say? Are you referring to Instructor Sarah? <laughs> well, she's certainly one of them. Still, coaxing her away from her former line of work certainly played a large part in giving Class 7 a great foundation. She is, after all, one of the strongest people in the Empire, and her experience makes her a natural field leader. Wait, what? Instructor Sarah? One of the strongest people in Erebonia? Exactly what experience might you be referring to? <laughs> I've even heard rumors of her daring exploits myself. She was known as the Purple Lightning. Doesn't that sound exciting? Wait, Purple Lightning? I knew it! If you two have heard of it, it must be a household name among martial artists. That's right, though I've just heard it in passing. Ah, that young ace of the Erebonian Bracer Guild, and one of the Empire's most famous bracers. She has a history full of brave feats and dangerous deeds. She was even the youngest bracer to achieve A-rank status. Back then, she was known as the Purple Lightning. 
Now you know her simply as your homeroom teacher.
someday. The time is finally at hand. At last, the hammer of judgment shall rouse this indolent capital from its slumber. Yeah! Comrade G, all of the necessary preparations are complete. Feels like you have so few men accompanying you. Wouldn't it be wise to call in a few others for backup? <laughs> There's nothing to fear. As long as I have this flute, not even the railway military police stand a chance of stopping us. Tomorrow, the people of this land will at last know our name. My dear comrades, I shall be counting on you all. Yeah! yeah!